Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning. Okay, uh, I hope that everybody uh, clear with my voice today because uh, I, Alhamdulillah, I already upload around three video. Okay, um, first one is the info introductions of uh, designing effective organization. This is about course info. And then the second one, I have uh, upload on uh, topic one. Okay, and then the, uh, the, sec and the third one, I already also upload in YouTube is topic two. So by today, I will proceed with our topic three. But since uh, some student is still uh, at and drop in my classes, because um, my way is like this. I'm not using GC, Google Classroom as our online platform. Because mostly what I did was I record uh, my lecture. And then I will upload. Okay, somehow certain ah uh, there is a need for me in order to brief on example your assignment. Okay, I will do also the briefing. Okay, live and maybe I will also ah uh, I was uh, doing my planning. I I'm sharing with you all today. Okay, because I don't want you to misunderstand, mistook me because ah uh, I wish to have the record version because ah uh, it ah uh, for the both beneficial of us because number one if you want to do revision you can just view in a new online okay new platform letter because after settle of the registration because uh if i'm not mistaken the eu i have uh, more than 20 plus plus students already because this is online class so online class uh, we don't have uh, so much problem it can be if i'm not mistaken for my diploma student is up to 40 students okay in one class but uh, of course, I would prefer it might be lesser than that because it's online, right? Uh, in order for the controlling, it much be better. Okay, so without further ado, since I already um, sharing uh, all the info in the group, WhatsApp, and make sure for those who are new entering my class, uh, I want you to put all your details, your name, and then email address, and then also your magic number. Make sure your Gmail address is the active Gmail address, huh? Uh, because this is for the new um, purposes. Okay, for those who do not know what's me new, for those who are my previous class uh, students, um, new is actually one of the platform that uh, I, I see used in order for online learning. Okay, so inside that, uh, for subject DEO, we will use this. Okay, in order to upload the do the do the note, and then um, for of course um. The most important thing, um, I will upload those the slides notes and then the assessment, uh, the guideline is inside that. But is uh, and also the assessment, inshallah. Okay, because if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, for this this subject, uh, we have sixty percent assessment, and then forty percent is final exam. And uh, of course, um, I also will be upload some of the past equation. Uh, when we almost uh, to the final exam week, uh, for your revision purposes, we will do that. And if I'm not mistaken, also uh, the online exam also will be your final exam will be online exam. So we will be done in uh, Neo, inshallah. So don't worry so much. I will guide you, okay, for that. And what you have to give me right now is the details that I ask you from your group WhatsApp. Huh? Your full name, your metric number, and also your active Gmail address. Okay, so without further ado, uh, I think that I'm like running right now, right? Uh, yeah, I'm quite fast in yeah, talking. Okay, for those who know me, okay, for those who are this is your first time with me, my name is Miss Noshalina Binti Nordin. I'm from School of Business and Legal Studies. Uh, but I'm doing my servicing with a uh, school of uh, Undergraduate and Foundation Studies, SFU, uh, uh, School of Foundation and Undergraduate Studies. Okay, I always have like uh, uh, vice versa, <laughs> the acronym name, right? Okay, so um, mostly um, the subject that I will teach uh, for uh, for SFU is uh, mostly on the subject entrepreneurship and one of like uh, designing effective organization and for this current semester, I will teach subject designing effective organization, uh, UMGT 3715 and also uh, this is new subject, uh, work integrated learning, okay, uh, BUMT 3705, that one is um, face to face class because we need something like uh, simulation to be done, okay, uh, in using system but still also need some uh, briefing of uh, uh, day by day and also class by class. Okay, okay. Now we proceed with our lecture today. Okay, we come up with like the chapter three already. Okay, because each week must be come up with uh, because we have twelve week and we have twelve chapter. 
and later also in the new i will share with you all if you uh, view for my video in a part introduction for designing effective organization for intro part under the course information under iic syllabus okay we have total 12 chapters and we have to make sure that we have to feel who feel all the chapters okay all right um yeah i hope that it's clear right now because right now i'm using like you know um yeah the new webcam actually it's more like hd version okay all right so we move to the chapter three fundamentals of the organization structure so for those who are looking for what is um the original uh, our textbook this is a uh, uh, organizational theory and design by Richard L. Duff. So Duff, uh, we're using 11 version, um, and the 11 edition. Okay, all right. So as the introduction, what is the organizational structure? Okay, so organization structure is uh, the formal reporting relationship. Okay, and we have the group of individuals, and then we have the design of the system. Okay, that's the thing that you have to remember. Okay, it's combinations of the formal reporting relationship and there is a grouping of individuals and they have design of the system. Okay, and then um, in here they are stated about horizontal information and coordination reflected in the organization chart. Okay, if you want to know what is organization chart, it's the chart for those who allocate where, where is the position for each of those um, uh, employees that working in one organization. Okay, I hope that I'm not too fast. Even though some of you may be saying, Madam, you are too fast, yeah, but try to help me because I'm using the uh, free premium, uh, free versions of uh, Zoom. So mostly Zoom is only in you know, okay for 40 minutes for free version. I'm not using premium eh, because I, I see it's not circulated this kind of uh, premium version for Zoom. So we have to use the free versions of so free versions for live lecture is only 40 minutes and then after that I will stop. But here I'm using the record version. Inshallah, it will be more than three. Okay. All right. So formal reporting relationship, we have the number of the levels. Okay. And then, of course, when we're talking about, <coughs> so sorry, yeah. Okay. When we're talking about the numbers of levels, uh, we are talking about how many levels that uh, indicated in your organizational structure and also in organization chart. And then um, we're talking about the span of control in one leader or representative of the the department. Okay, how much does the people who are you monitoring and also observing? Okay, because we're talking about span of control in here. You imagine that your span, okay, that you use for to wash and clean your dishes and plate, right? So how much that the span can control? Okay, if let's say I'm a lecturer and the school of business subject study. So I have my deputy dean. So under deputy dean for the business subject is how many? Okay, lecturers. And maybe deputy dean for SFU, let's say how many lecturers below SFU. Okay. So in terms of the span of control, the leader, how much those people they can actually monitor and control. Alright. And clarifies delegation of authorities, for example, levels of the position power in the organization. When we're talking about delegation, we are talking about how does you can divide the task among your, your people. If let's say you are working in uh, administrative uh, department, you are working in the marketing department, you are working in the operation department, you are working with the financial uh, department. So that is delegation of authority. And the marketing department leader, for example, head of department in marketing cannot instruct the people and the personnel and the, for example, in finance department because it might be what we call in contrast. Okay, delegation of duties, delegation of the work duties is totally different. So that's when we're talking about authority, we are talking about the same nature of the work, which is belong to the same department. Okay, we're talking about the levels of the position power. And then um, the second one, we moving to the grouping of individuals. I already mentioned just now, it's about the creation of department. And then we have administration department, we have administration come human resource department, we have marketing department, we have operation department or production department, and then we do have financial and account department. So this is the creations of the different department and they have a group of individuals under each of the department. 
All right. And then the third one, we have design of the system. We have communication, coordination, and integrations of effort. Meaning to say, each of these system will be connected each other. We are not so saying that you are working in the admin, you are working in the marketing department, you are working in the operation department. You only working within your own. So you have to interrelate it, and you have to communicate. You have to coordinate with the other departments too. That's why we call as the one organizational structure. Okay, because how it link intertwine between each others and also how does it can relate and link each other because we are not working alone okay bear in mind we are in the group of organizational structure okay we are in jama ah, all right and then horizontal information and coordination reflected in organization chart this is uh, i mentioned just now uh, we are talking about horizontal okay and then of course every single source the information have to be coordinate uh, effectively and to, to make sure that the smoothen of the organizational goal can be achieved okay i think it's for the introduction part maybe it's quite clear all right okay now we're moving on to the what is the sample of the organization chart okay we have the functional so mostly the question for final exam this is what might be tested okay they must ask how many and what kind types of the organization chart and then we have functional divisional matrix horizontal or visual okay so if you can see from here we have the blue color is come from ceo and the red color we have vice president for finance and then vice president for manufacturing and then we have director for human resource and at each of these okay if you can see the span of control under vice president finance we have chief accountant budget analyst and then under vice president manufacturing we have plan super uh, superintendent and then maintenance superintendent and then under director human resource we have training specialist and also benefits administrator so this is a simple organization chart that can be shown to you all okay whether it's functional division uh, matrix horizontal or virtual okay all right so we're moving on to the next one okay so this is uh, the parts that you have to know after this we go deeper each one of this we have functional okay you have you have to remember uh, all the blue uh, the dark blue color the baby blue color and then the blue color okay we have ocean color here okay ocean blue color functional divisional include geographic and then we have matrix and then we have horizontal and virtual network okay um the most popular in the exam question also mostly they're asking you to illustrate you have to draw okay what kind of the organization chart okay all right so the first one okay functional structure okay functional structure the first one if you realize there will be in the bracket there most frequent meaning to say um from all the five okay we have five right okay five types this is the most functional structure being used in around all the organization i can say around the world okay and why okay number one because the activities group by common function as i told you before if let's say you are under admin department okay let's say you are under um uh, human resource department or maybe you are in marketing department you are in the operation department finance and account department so you your activity your nature of work work duties job duties uh, job JD, job description, and also job spec, according to your common function. Common function in here, what is your routine? Okay, your routine task. Okay, and then the second one, all specific skills and knowledge are consolidated. Consolidated meaning to say all are norms, means known by everybody. Okay, consolidated meaning to say you know what your JD, I know what my JD. Okay, so we are talking about our skill and knowledge in here, your JS job spec. Okay, what is the skills needed? Okay, let's say you are in the account department, you have to know how to use UBS software, for example. Okay, that is skill and knowledge. As the accountant, you must know this software. Right, and the third one promotes economies of scale. Okay, for those, maybe this is new term for you. Okay, what is economies of scale? Economies of scale like this when you maybe producing one okay let's say i want ask you to let's you have to photocopy one piece of paper so the photocopy center may be charged for the one piece is 10 cent or maybe 20 cent because it's only just little quality uh, quantity but if i ask the same thing but i want you to photocopy or may make a copy 100 pieces for example so from 10 cent or 20 cent they will reduce the price 
So in the concept of economies of scales, the more you produce, the lower the price, the lower the cost. Are you get me? Okay. And the third point, sorry, and the fourth one, slower response to the environmental changes. Uh, why is it so slower response? Because this is based on the function. And if the function is just stated rigid with that, so you can't actually uh, automatically change according to the what may be like pandemic. Okay, maybe for example, what happened in currently situation right now, we have COVID-19 and all of a sudden people change, maybe from marketing department to maybe HR department. You can't be like that because it's what we are talking about the environmental changes wouldn't actually affect this functional structure. Are you get me? Yeah. And then the, the last one is prevalent approach. Prevalent meaning say they are more, more outstanding, okay, more, more outstanding and the most preferable approach but few companies can respond into the environment without horizontal linkage so if the question asks from all the types which is the most preferable most pre prevalent the answer is functional structure all right okay so we're moving on to the sample functional organization chart so previously when i'm asking about this question if you still remember okay this is under functional Okay, because the question asks whether it's functional, divisional, matrix, horizontal, or visual, the answer is functional. And then if you see from here, the same thing, right? It will be just repeating again, okay? So this is a sample of the functional organization in chart. And then uh, this is about their strength and weaknesses. So the question is around that. They ask you about what type is the most preferable, and then which one is the what is the strength and weaknesses, and you have to come up with your explanation. Of course, this is the keywords, okay? The keywords in here you have to remember at least three, three strength, three weaknesses, and then you have to elaborate depending on the marks. If the mark is fifteen marks, for example, and you have to give three strength and two weaknesses, of course, each of that you have to give elaboration. For example, five or three, yeah, three points, okay? All right. So um. Yeah, the first one, strength. What is the strength of functional? Okay, allows the economies of scale within the functional department. I told you before, it can actually, the more you produce, the lower the cost. That's make it allows economies of scale. And then the second one enables in-depth knowledge and skill development. Okay, people will become more multitasking because they know what they want to do. They know clearly what is their get as job spec. Okay, I'm better in finance, I'm better in account, I'm better in HR, I'm better in marketing. So you know how deep your knowledge is about it. And then the third one, we have enables organization to accomplish the functional goals. Okay, when we're talking about here, we know what is the direction of the company. Okay, we know what is the mission, we know what is the vision of the company. And the fourth one is best with more, only one or a few products. So it shouldn't have too much products because it's more on focusing product on one uniting all right and we're moving to the weaknesses um for the weakness part uh number one is very slow response times to the environmental changes okay and uh why it's slow because it's not affected after all okay this because you are focusing on one department and function of course you will be focusing on that huh? and the second one may cause decision to pile on top hierarchy overload yeah this is problem also because you are only depending on your top management to make decision and this is uh we can say more on centralization okay for for those who are new you can be kept back in topic two in chapter two we are talking about what this means centralization versus decentralization we have a lot of term in this subject and the third one we have leads to the poor horizontal coordination um, among the departments because the horizontal coordination is only focusing on your specific department only okay and so i can say that in terms of coordination among departments will be totally very poor uh, because you're focusing on your job your routine job and result in the less innovation yeah it's truly indeed because why because the innovation is more focusing on your department if you are in the marketing department so innovation is goes within the marketing functions and strategy only if it's within like uh in a production and operational is within only that department only okay and then it's involved restricted views of the organization goal so yeah, in a kind of the view organization goals, uh, we can say that maybe the top management and the policy types of department will make it, but not to the, the functional department. Uh, because the functional department, mostly we are in the middle, the first line managers, and they are only just 
a supported line. Okay, they are not like the product management who are doing and create and uh, how to say that uh, um, doing this uh, policy maker. Uh, so, yeah, of course, it's just a uh, first line or we can say support line. Huh? All right, so we're moving to the second. Second, uh, second structure which is divisional structure so divisional structure is product structure or strategic business unit or known as SBU okay and division organized according to the products services and product groups okay let's see I give very simple example let's see uh, in the manufacturer of uh, Nike Nike product Nike brand Nike how you pronounce I do not know but I mentioned it's Nike so we have the apparels apparels the t-shirt okay a clothes for male we have apparels for women and we have the apparels for children okay so this is according to the categorizations of the products according to the gender and also generation okay and um the goods for achieving coordination across the functional department of course uh, they do will be coordinate with this uh, whether marketing okay uh, production and operation department okay and they're suited for the fast change okay if the company want to change maybe the another sub business unit okay they won't change it maybe not only for the woman not for just for men and for the children maybe they come out maybe the another for babies example right okay so it will be totally um, will change okay suit to the environment and they will lose the economies of scale because it's according to the sub business unit okay what i said so maybe uh, the production line for maybe apparel for male is much more demanding compared to the woman okay because as you know sports apparel clothes maybe might be favored by the male but i'm not saying um, that one is just example huh? and then the last one lacks technical specialization why technical specialization might be lacks because we're focusing on the group of the products okay and um if we can say that mostly it's a mass mass product even though it's for roles for a uh, male for women for a uh, men and women and then also children but in terms of the manufacturing line it's still assembly line okay it's still been done in a factory okay there, there, there is no specific okay to do male work like this to do for the female like this to do the children no it's totally will be might be used the same materials example okay there will no specific technical on part set huh? all right and then uh, this is the reorganization am i right spelling this one reorganization uh, reorganizational functional to divisional uh, just now we learned about the functional organization chart right so this from functional is might be break up okay there will be more specific into divisional okay we have like you can see the purple color there functional structure we have import tech and then we have the president and then we do have the r d manufacturing accounting marketing and then for the divisional structure we have info tech and then we have electronic publishing office automations and virtual reality and you can see every single of the red color here we have r d we have marketing we have accounting and we have manufacturing okay and this is the four uh value change okay that already stated here okay so this is how they are break into more deeply okay their functional and also divisional structure okay okay we're moving to the what is the strength and weaknesses okay for the strength okay uh for the divisional they are suited to the fast changes okay in unstable environment okay let's say they might say that all right for this kind uh during this pandemic okay due to the car COVID-19 pandemic okay maybe we should change instead of making those apparel for the woman for the male for the children why not we make some maybe masks okay maybe it's brand Nike example right okay we maybe can make some PPE for prote uh, personal protective equipment product okay brand Nike yeah we can do that but maybe we can use some hair scarf okay brand Nike so this is a some of the idea on how we want to suit according to the changes by unstable environment pandemic is counted as one of the unstable environment 
And then the second one, it leads to the customer satisfaction because product responsibility and context points are clear. Yeah, because totally, you are actually meet the demands by the customer. And the third one is involve high coordination across the functions because, of course, when you want to create the certain products, okay, product structure, product divisional, you have to actually link with the production line and also operation okay and when you want to market the product of course you need the marketing department so that's why coordination and delegation between the other functional structure is very important and the fourth one allows the units to adapt to differences in the product region and customers so you can see okay if let's say in ASEAN market region it will be totally different okay the sizing okay uh, in terms of your yeah, preferences might be quite different from Europe market and maybe it will be different from Japanese market okay and Western counterpart market so you have to adapt with the difference of the region and the product and also the customer okay and the fifth one best in large organization with several products so meaning to say if you have more product can I say product diversification yeah so when you have more product diversification okay actually it's suit enough when you're using this divisional structure and the last one decentralized decision making meaning to say you're giving authority to the lower level to make decision to the upper level so this is very very good okay why i said so because you are not waiting too much like bureaucracy like functional structure before because they only have to wait waiting for your top management to make decision somehow we are from for example this bottom line okay low level employees know what you should decide why i say so because you know the work sorry you know how well the work been done okay <laughs> compare if you ask your top management they don't even know what actually you are did what are you doing okay because they are not directly huh, on the job of that task Okay, and then we go and moving on to the weaknesses. Okay, the first one, uh, we are talking about um, eliminates the economies of scale in the functional departments. Okay, so in the part of um, economies of scale, I can say like their cost is quite high due to we have to customize according to the customer preferences, regions and products. No? And the second one leads to the poor coordination across the product lines because why? because they have several products product diversification so in terms of the product line will be very poor okay they don't specific and only this product they have several okay and the third one we have eliminated in the in depth competence and technical specialization because you are doing a product diversification just now so you might be not only competent in one area so you might be ignoring certain of the technical specialization and the last one makes integration and standardization across product line difficult for the product line will be totally difficult for this divisional because you've been uh, you've been encouraged to have more innovation in a different of product diversification okay i have a lot using marketing terms in here huh? all right so this is a sample why is it okay or all of a sudden it's just moving to the third one right okay this is the sum a sample of the geographic structure so we have a ceo here okay you see it based on continent huh? it based on the regions we have americans we have brazil representative okay of this country asian or pacific and then we have western europe and also Middle East and under America we have North America, Latin America and for Asia we have Japan and Australia. So this is one example of the geographic structure. Now we're moving on to the matrix structure. So matrix structure, um, they are multi-focused with the strong horizontal linkage and the condition for matrix, okay, number one, um, they are shared resources across the organization because it's multi-focus you know they can be in other counterparts of uh, area and they're sharing the same resources and in terms of uh, the condition for metric they have also have two or more critical outputs required which is means products and technical knowledge and yeah because why they say critical outputs required because they must be have the product expertise and then they also must have 
those people who are very expertise in the technical knowledge and of course the environment is very complex and uncertain because it depending how much you can produce the certain product itself okay and the next one we allows the organization to meet dual demands so if let's say they have more than one demand basis okay you can meet it because why because it multi focus and last one they have the largest weaknesses that employees have two bosses and somehow there will be conflicting demand because one boss sometimes makes me makes us headache right <laughs> if we have two boss of course it will have something like you know conflicting okay because sometimes um, in terms of the demand might be have a different expectation and also standard okay so this is will be problem for the metric metric structure and so this is a sample of the matrix organization okay as you can see the color is quite colorful here blue color director of the product operations design vice president manufacturing vice president the yellow color marketing vice president and then we have controller and then we have procurement manager and each of the product manager a product manager b product manager c and product manager d will be equivalent with each of these managers okay they will give the direction on that so you see this is how the sample metric organization of course you will be headache because the conflict demand will be arise between those people okay <laughs> okay all right now we go for the condition for metric structure okay metric structure okay uh, need for share and flexible use of the people across the product sometimes people need a product a sometimes people need product b so there will be share okay and it will be used for succeed and two or more critical output like new products and technical knowledge will be enhanced okay it's very good because you keep innovation to occur okay and the, the next one the environment is complex and uncertain so who by group you have to actually see what is potential might be demand could occur due to this problem all right and then what is the strength and weaknesses of the matrix uh, structure okay so the first one the strength is uh, achieve coordination necessary to meet both demands from the customer because sometimes somehow the customer demand more than one okay so that's why from this metric it can be cooked with these kinds of the uh, requirement and standard okay and the second one flexible sharing of the human resource across the products so we're talking about the people people involved and uh, the capacity of the competency KSA knowledge skill environment um, abilities and also attitudes of the human resources will be shared and then the third one in in terms of suited to the complex decision and frequent changes in unstable environment so when we have in the situation might be very complex okay, and the complexity occur it can be have a quick changes so this is very good it's, it's totally matrix uh, structure like um, the second one just now it's not functional but divisional when there is a changes maybe some unstable environment occur uh, you can have the frequent changes right and the fourth one in terms of the provide opportunity for both functional and product skill development um, we can develop a, a frequently product development okay because we're talking about you are encouraging on uh, research and development r and so in other way around you give some opportunity for that and the last one uh, best in the medium size organization with multiple products so uh, this is talking about SMT products so when you have multiple products you actually suit to have this use matrix uh, structure because you can meet and cope with the dual demand and the the in contrast okay we have the weaknesses okay for the weaknesses uh, number one is cause the participants to experience dual authority which can be frustrating and confusing because you need to fulfill demand from boss a you need to fulfill the demand from boss b managers a managers b okay so it's quite frustrating somehow because we all feel that we already meet the requirement after all they feel like there will be conflicting demand and this actually worsening the situation 
right? And the second one means participant needs good interpersonal skill and extensive training, meaning to say the participants, those the audiences, of course, uh, it come from those the employees itself. You have to have a very extensive in terms of the training, interpersonal skill, meaning, meaning to say that communication approach skills. And in terms of the extensive training here, meaning to say that how you want to cope with the situation, let's say we have the fast changes. We have to cope. So, uh, who by who, we need a very thorough and tough training for that, huh? it's like simulation and somehow. Huh? And the third one is time consuming. Yeah, of course, it's time consuming because it involves frequent meetings and sometimes the complete resolution session will be take time. Okay, that's why even one boss will be headache, right? This is headache. How come we can adapt with the two bosses at one time? Yeah, to meet the customer dual demand just now. And the fourth one will not work unless the participants understand it and adopt collegial rather than vertical type relationship. So in here, um, this matrix structure will totally not will be success if let's say they are not actually know what actually um, their own JD, job description, their own duties and uh, rather than they adopt the collegial, they say in here, rather than vertical type relationship. So, they don't go for horizontal, right? And the last one requires great effort to maintain power balance. So, um, of course, it takes time to be a professional um, manager in it's okay fine now okay right i'm so sorry for the technical problem yeah this is always happen right in everywhere i think okay in everywhere that we have okay maybe i should share share back why this cannot be function okay all right so we're moving on to the i think that this is already fifth structure horizontal structure okay so organizational around core processes and the processes is referred to the tasks and activities and shift towards the horizontal structure during re-engineering for those who do not know what's mean engineering the business process re-engineered okay maybe a certain process of the business they have to be adopting a certain of technology to make the task become more smooth and become more easy okay that is re-engineering process let's see i give very simple example uh, maybe before this the production line is using manual labor menggunakan kaki tangan secara manual i'm so sorry for those the korean students i translate little bit so the company tried to re-engineering okay re-engineer their the process of work, okay, task by adopting and buying new machine. New machinery maybe for using manual workers, we only can produce 100 units per day. But when using this machinery from 100 units become 1000 units per day. So this is the business process re-engineering, alright. And the third one, we have eliminates vertical hierarchy and also departmental boundaries. So when we're talking about vertical hierarchy, we eliminate the process like what we learn in the divisional structure right, uh, before this. Okay, they are more on hierarchy imposed. Okay, and in terms of departmental boundaries, also will be uh, discouraged. 
will be avoided. Dia boleh dielakkan lah. Huh? Alright. So, this is a sample of the horizontal structure. Okay. If you look like this because I have to see whether it's the right uh, structure. This is the good example from the textbooks uh, regarding progressive casualty insurance company. So, how they do, they have a tool here. Okay. They have top management. Then, uh, we have the, uh, they have two process. We have new product development process and then we have procurement and logistic process. So, they have team A, team B here. Okay, and then you can see they have team 1, team 2, team 3. And if you realize, the process also totally be different. Okay, and you can see uh, the process owner, we have market analysis, research. And then we have the product planning, testing and to the customer. And the next one, we have analysis, purchasing, material flow, distribution and also the customer. So, we can see from here, under one top management team, but they have two different of team. Can I say that? No, it's not team. It's about process. Okay. Number one, new product development process and the other one is procurement and logistic process. Okay. So, what is in the horizontal? Okay. Horizontal or we can say that horizontal structure. What is the strength and weaknesses? Okay. So, bear in mind, okay, the first one in terms of the strengths, um, they are promotes flexibility and rapid response to changes in the customer needs. Okay. Because as we mentioned before, if you realize their diagram here, they have two different of the uh, process. Okay. Process team. Okay. They have can see like team A, team B, right? Okay. And they do a variety of job at the same time. And the second one directs the attention of everyone towards the production and delivery of value to the customer. Number one, customer value is about satisfaction. And the third one, each employee has the broader view of the organization goal. So, um, they will look into the company who can actually um, meet their satisfaction, of course. And the second one, they can meet in terms of their demand okay, at maybe crucial time eh? and number four promotes a focus on teamwork and collaboration uh, good things about horizontal because you encouraging people to work in jama'ah uh, you, you in, um, undergo with something like groupism and then when you are working in the kinds of the teamwork and collaboration actually it can give a lot of ideas huh? and fresh ideas come from different people different background and it can actually uh, embark certain of um, a very facilitate sorry very advances uh, new ID huh? and in other way around maybe we call we so called as brainstorming uh, and then the fifth one improve the quality of life for employees by offering them the opportunity to share the responsibility make the decision and be accountable for outcome so uh, in other words this word is talking about the term decentralization Okay, you know right, I already mentioned in chapter 2, what's mean decentralization, meaning to say you give some authority, some opportunity for those the lower level, first time managers, supervisors to make decision and of course in order to make them be a part of the company and then they feel that they share certain responsibility. So they will be responsible for every single of decision being made and of course they will be careful on that. Wise decision wise decision eh? wise decision have to be implemented and of course somehow when we are first time making decisions sometimes we make the wrong decision so this is how the way we learn right and then um weaknesses okay determining the core processes is difficult and time consuming yeah it's not easy right because you realize or not from the diagram this is all about the core processes and the market analysis okay you can see new product development process they do market analysis, research. Research not only to do survey today, tomorrow get result. No, it's something like analysis. Huh? It's analysis part of research. Okay, product planning, testing, and then and the customer. And how about the procurement? They need some analysis again, purchasing, and then they have material flow and also distribution to the customer. And uh, the second one, uh, in term requires changes in culture job design, management, philosophy, and information and billboard system. Of course, when we have a different in terms of uh, the culture, the uh, diversity, work, I always mention this word, huh? lately, okay? Um, diversity of work, diversity of uh, 
employees okay in the workplace so somehow we learn okay every single people culture on how japanese uh, working uh, system how those european uh, leaders is working and how the americas okay us uk people are working their working style will be requires some changes to us and sometimes it it's not easy to adopt especially when you come to japanese system right we are concerned about time management huh? and in terms of the management philosophy will be totally different when one of the management will change okay you have to 360 degree also change yeah? and in terms of the information it will be totally different also as the reward system because you have to give some rewards information to those people who are doing the good job all right and then the third one we have traditional managers may bark when they have to give up the power and authority may barking here maybe um not like barking like like dog is barking to their owners not that one huh? but we are talking about the traditional managers try to actually uh, feel um dissatisfaction or maybe we can see the words like grievances rumut merumut satu rumutan okay bark when they have to give up the certain power because they're already working in one company for a long time after all people not appreciate them so this kind of traditional manager will bark back to the company huh? and then uh, requires significant training of employees to work effectively in horizontal team environment so basically when we're talking about here um training is still lack okay that's why in order to to work in very effectively it's very very difficult it takes time it's not it will be difficult but it takes time huh? of course it takes time and patience and the last one can limit industry development because you are working in the group so to see the outstanding and the most prevailing individual who are very competent enough to do a job is very difficult because everybody will representative a group okay and that is some maybe you are individual who are working hard but it's the name to get recognition is a group names so for those who are individual will feel like frustrated okay all right so we're moving to the virtual networks and outsourcing for those who do not know what's been outsourcing we hire a third party to do a part of the value change of the organization okay so extend horizontal organization beyond the boundaries of the organization the most common strategy is outsourcing so they contract out certain task function okay i give very simple example let's say i i see we want to recruit new students okay so what we do we don't have maybe sufficient marketing personnel staff so what we do we outsource we ask maybe agent in order to find out the good student the new students to enter iic so this is what we call outsourcing okay we use the third party in order to have like to help a certain task function or maybe i can because we're talking about tasks right now eh? maybe like in other way around we want to find the new staff so human resource department using job street okay maybe they use some manpower planning agency in order to recruit new staff so that one also outsourcing okay that they will be done by the outsourcing company and at the end you only just get the staff but the company have to pay the commission to the outsourcing company all right that is how the business being done Right, and the virtual or modular structures subcontract most of its major functions to separate the companies. Um, yeah, of course. And the virtual network organization serves as the central hub with the contracted expert. So when we're talking about virtual network in here, we are not talking about the common people. They are talking about the five star grade professional people, expertise. Okay, if you see like in LinkedIn account, you they be rated by star. The more star they gain, actually the more professional the people, the person. Okay, you know LinkedIn account, yeah, you can see that many people as established and promoting themselves inside that. This is one of the social media also, but more on the job hunting. They've been rated according to the star. So this is like star representative of, it's not representative itself, but the company rated the the particular person. Okay, and then uh, the visual network example okay we have four focuses on the product development and marketing 
we do have uh, manufacturing companies, research and testing labs, and marketing firms, and then we have information technology services. So actually, maybe I should add a little bit. The nine should be intertwined. Do you secara uh, kita kata apa? Uh, linkage each other. Okay. Core focuses uh, on product development and marketing will go to research and testing lab and then they will go to IT services, they go for marketing firm and then they will go for manufacturing companies. Right. The virtual structure, okay, strength and weaknesses, okay, virtual network structure, strength and weaknesses. The first one, um, the strength is enables even small organization to obtain talents, okay, and resources. And of course, uh, in here, we can see that those people, they can be actually seeking and maybe digging certain of uh, these people, talented people in worldwide because we're using virtual network. Huh? And the second one gives the company immediate skill and reach without huge investment in factory equipment or distribution facilities because um, the company who are doing this kind of thing, okay, they do they do know what is the expertise. Sorry, what is the requirement from the company that need their expertise? Okay, and the third one enables the organization to be highly flexible and responsive to the changing need. Okay, of course, we are talking about um, how does the company able to meet the fast changes. So virtual network uh, and metric structure and also divisional structure is almost similar to each other in terms of the adapting quick changes. Uh, kita cuba untuk mematuhi, mematuhi ke? Kita cuba macam adapt okay, and adopt the new situation uh, that has new changes. Maksudnya mudah untuk menerima perubahan dengan cepat lah. Okay? It's not like functioning. Functional structure, they are more slower. And the last one, we have reduced administrative overhead costs. Okay, we'll be talking about overhead costs. We are talking about operational costs itself. So, uh, it can be actually reduced because we are doing virtual network. We no need to have the brick and mortar uh, organization. We just doing virtual. Okay, and then um, weaknesses, managers do not have hands-on control over many activities and employees yeah because uh, as I mentioned before it's more on virtual network and they are waiting for the response actually more on response and network linkage from one address another to another and they are requires a great deal of time okay to manage relationship and potential conflict with the contract partners because you are using the virtual network somehow people they can have some complaints using like uh, CRM, eCRM, electronic uh, customer relationship management. Okay, you can do complaints with that. And the problem with this, when one button is shared, okay, it can damage the image of the company itself. Okay, so that's why when this takes time in order to have the great time to deal with the, uh, when maybe we have potential conflict with the contract partners, there will be problem. So that's why to make sure that this problem couldn't occur or minimize in terms of the conflict to be occur, maybe uh, another suggestion, um, we have to open something like um, FAQ, frequently asked question, or maybe give some uh, response, okay, maybe some uh, immediate feedback. Okay, when there is a conflict, then try to have a solution in immediate response, rather than maybe prolong or maybe just uh, postpone okay, the certain of the issue, I think that uh, make a fast action is much better, uh, especially resolution and also conflict resolution technique. Okay, we have many, right? Maybe number one, we can use litigation. That one is the worst case when we bring, for example, to the court system or maybe we can use arbitration or maybe we can use negotiation or maybe we can use mediation. So we have many actually how to overcome with the conflicts. Okay? And the third one, we have, uh, there is a risk of the organization of say that if the partner fails to deliver or boost out of the business. So uh, when there is a risk of organizational failure, okay, um, 
Okay, because it's talking about service. When service is maybe not on time, okay, not delivered on time, not meet the requirement of the customer satisfaction, totally, is talking about you are seeking and you are digging your own grief. Can I say that? Yeah, because this is so very important to make sure that um. The business have to be delivered well. So there must be, I didn't say that every single business out there, when they are doing business, is totally smooth from A to Z. No. Somehow there will be a risk. It's like, you know, uh, we call it a roller coaster, sometimes up, sometimes down. But if your partner feel you already do your part, and all of a sudden your partner, is, your SBU, as business unit, is not doing the right things, okay? And deliver it well to your customer. It will be tarnish your image. It will tarnish the company's image. And people will say, "This is the company who are making a, uh, yeah, problem with us. Why should we uh, still with them?" So they will withdraw doing some contracts with you and so forth. And the last one, employee loyalty and corporate culture might be weak because employees feel they can be replaced by the contract services. See, this is what I told us now. So when we're talking about um. The loyalty of the customer will be uh, slowly, um, okay, can I say that? Okay, loyalty will be start to, to shade, okay, and then, um, and the corporate culture will be totally weak because um, the employees itself feel that uh, they can be replaced by the contract services. So, other, other company will be replaced on them. Okay, due to the small problem, we can't say small problem. Huh? From the small problem, will be become huge problem. Alright, so the hybrid structure. Ah, uh, so this is all more on technology. Okay, combination of the various structure approaches. So they are tailored to the specific needs, and mostly often used in rapidly changing environment, and they have the greater flexibility. So hybrid, we are not talking about hybrid car, but you can use that kinds of the common sensational sense, okay, and this is tailored to the specific meaning it's customized. It's customized to your people, okay, to your employees, to your customers as well. And of course, when we're talking about open use in a rapidly changing environment, let's see what happened in this time pandemic, COVID-19, it can be, yeah, easily to be uh, changed due to the environment. And of course, they are very flexible. And after all, in order to conclude application of the structure design, okay, we have around five right as structure. Each structure meets the different needs. We can say the original is the best, but the original is the most preferable and most used, widely used around the world. But it doesn't mean to say that is the best, huh? And each a structure meets different needs and it's tool that can help managers to be more effective. And structural alignment aligns structure with the organization goal. How the way on your company willing to go and derive and bring their steering to go and achieve the goal. So so do with the alignment. In the same terms of the structural deficiency, number one decision making is delay or lacking quality, and the second one organizational uh, sorry organization cannot meet changing needs okay somehow they need fast they need very slow okay and employee performance sometimes they are declines and needs are and are not made. this is uh usually rampant happen when i say rampant happen because your employee performance somehow also like roller coaster sometimes up sometimes down so they not only just on the peak Okay, sometimes they also be might be demotivated due to the surrounding environment, maybe pay rewards, huh? and then they have too much conflict. Too much conflict, there must be a conflict in the organization, but too much conflict, it will be ramp, too much or rampant conflict, it will harm our company back. The environment itself is not suit as well to work in a very harmonious organization. So that's why people feel like stress intense and sometimes uh, they will like feel that every day they want to resign from the work okay so that's why 
It's good to have complaint but not too rampant. Tidak selalu, tidak terlalu kerap. Not frequently complaint. Okay. Alright. And then um, this is the structure today versus um, organization need for efficiency versus learning. As you can see, we have a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six above this. And you can see the difference on how in terms of your vertical and horizontal. Horizontal, the blue color, coordination, learning, innovation, they are more organic. And for those who are vertical, they are more control, they are more efficiency, they are more stability and they are more durability. So it depends on how the company goes itself. But this diagram already, already featuring that which the company will moving forward to mechanistic goal, which company more on organic goal. So this mechanistic organic goal for those new students, please recap back for the topic 1, chapter 1. We already learned this term. And make sure you do some review back. Huh? And uh, we do have this, um, what we call efficiency versus learning outcomes. So, to conclude, okay, the vertical organization and also horizontal organization. Horizontal structure is more dominant, okay, in terms of their shared task, empowerment, relax, hierarchy, horizontal communication face to face. And there are many teams and task forces and decentralized decision making. So just now I mentioned decentralized, meaning to say that most probably that you're giving some opportunity to your first line manager supervisors to make the decision uh, instead of to make only just top management uh, decision, right? Whereby for vertical structure, uh, they are dominant in specialized tasks. They are very strict hierarchy and they are vertical communication and they have few teams, task force or integrator and they are more centralized decision making. So um, basically there will be different okay, or one other round to another round and to conclude there is no best way you know which company are willing to, to go and which structure is suit to you and thank you for now. Uh, thank you for listening for my lecture and for those new students, you can subscribe to my channel Noshalina Nordin in YouTube and of course, after I'm done with this record version, I will upload in your and thank you for um, for your lending your ears and eyes okay um, very in time, uh, I will from time to time, we we'll update what is our group assignment and peers assignment so anything regards to the question regarding the topics, okay, you can shoot from our official group WhatsApp. And thank you for now. And please take care of yourself. Keep social hashtag keep social distancing, keep sanitizing, hashtag, hashtag uh, take care of yourself, washing your hands while singing the song, birthday song twice. Okay, and yeah, bye bye. Assalamualaikum.